At ESB, we've been powering Ireland for generations. Our first hydropower station in Ardna Crusha was commissioned in 1929 and was one of the largest worldwide. And in the 1940s, we began a scheme to bring electricity to all corners of the country. The Rural Electrification Scheme has been called the Quiet Revolution because it transformed everyday lives with very little fuss. The Wicklow Gap, situated almost in the middle of the Wicklow Hills, is only a stone's throw from the hustle and bustle of Dublin City. As early as the 8th century, the valley was an important landmark for pilgrims making the journey over the hills to Glendalough. A special paved road was built to ease the burden of the weary traveller to his place of worship. This was known as St. Kevin's Road, the remains of which can still be seen today. The quiet, serene beauty seems like a different world to the fast-moving technological atmosphere of today's modern city. The buzz and whir of machines seem alien to this place of natural tranquility. It is difficult to believe that this valley has been touched by modern technology. Yet, here at Turlock Hill is a modern high-tech power station which combines the natural elements to produce quiet, efficient power. Mountain water is the key to this subterranean power plant that blends so well with its beautiful surroundings. At Airgrid, engineers monitor and control the electrical power system with the aid of sophisticated computer programs. Generating stations on the system feed electricity into the national transmission grid to meet the changing demands of a modern enterprise culture. To spread the risk of changing world fuel costs, ESB stations run on various energy sources. These include Hydro, the original source harnessed by ESB in 1927, Peat, our indigenous fossil fuel, Wind and Coal, imported from around the world, and Pump Storage at Turlock Hill. Of course, Ireland has opted out of using nuclear energy for environmental reasons. Each station has its place in the intricate system. The computer programs advise the engineers how best to make the most efficient use of each station. The most cost-effective plant is used first. This is a delicate balancing act. To have too many generators standing by would be wasteful, yet too few would be very risky. So it's not as simple as turning on more stations when required. To add to this difficult equation, electrical demand rises and falls throughout the day and night, and as electricity cannot be stored in significant quantities, the generators must always be ready to meet the changing demand from customers. The system also has to cope with normal maintenance programs and the possibility of generating plant failure at any time. This seems like an impossible task. So how does the system cope? If an incident results in one of the generating sets at a station failing during a peak demand period, this could result in a shortfall in the available power to meet the demand. As a result of this imbalance, the system frequency starts to fall. Load shedding is imminent, but within 15 seconds, the system could be restored with frequency back operating at 50 Hz and customers would be unaware of any problems. All this happens without any human intervention. The engineers at Airgrid monitor what has happened on the computer screens. But how is the computer able to correct the situation so quickly? The answer is Turlock Hill, the fastest starting power generating plant on the system. The generating sets cut in so quickly that the operators at the station are not even aware of the problem until after the event. Unlike the other stations, Turlock Hill is not a primary source of power. In fact, as a pumped storage station, it is a net user of electricity. It relies on power from other generating stations to store its own power source for future use. This is how it works. The station consists of two lakes. One, a natural lake, and the other an artificial lake built 286 meters above at the top of Turlock Hill. The generating plant is built into the mountain with a large diameter pipe connecting the two lakes. At night and during periods of light demand, Energy from other low-cost ESB generating stations is used to pump water from the lower natural lake to the upper man-made lake where it is stored. Then during peak load, when generating costs are high, Turlock Hill earns its keep. Water from the top lake is allowed flow through the connecting pipe. 
This fast-flowing water drives turbines connected to generators to produce electricity. In this way, Turlock Hill can take over generation from more expensive plants and provide fast and flexible reserve for an expected demand on the system. At full load, with the upper lake full, the station can generate 290 megawatts for four and a half hours. However, the station is normally generating at part load throughout the day, increasing and decreasing output to meet the system demand. At night, the upper lake is refilled, taking six hours to fill to capacity if it has been emptied. In the early 1960s, ESB planned the construction of this station for purely economic reasons. The station would displace high-cost generating plant at peak demand period with energy generated from water pumped at low cost during off-peak times. However, the station today fulfills an additional role by contributing to system reserve, responding quickly to changes in customer demand. This important role means that ESB can make the most economical use of all generating plants while maintaining a reserve backup situation. This can be done without incurring huge cost from running expensive generating plant just as backup. Even at night when Turlock Hill is pumping water to fill the upper lake, it can still provide reserve for the system by shedding one or more pumps, each giving 68 megawatts of power back to the system, or in extreme circumstances, it can switch to generator mode in just over two minutes. However, there is usually at least one set not pumping and ready to start generating within 15 seconds. The site at Turlock Hill was chosen after extensive examination of available locations. The proximity of Loch Nahanigan, the natural lower lake, to the flat-topped hill meant it was ideal for the project. The height of the location, at 700 meters above sea level, was a disadvantage, but this was outweighed by the fact that it was so close to Dublin City. Work began on the site in 1968. One million tons of peat were removed from the crown of the hill. The upper lake was formed by removing the apex of the hill to form a flatbed while using the quarried stone to build a surrounding embankment. More than 300,000 tons of granite were excavated in construction of the tunnel. This rock now forms the base for the outdoor switching station, which handles the power at 220,000 volts. At the time of construction, this was the biggest civil engineering project ever carried out in Ireland. A large access tunnel was constructed to service the cavern which houses the generating hall situated over 300 meters below the top of the hill. From here, work began on the tunnel to house the enormous pipe, known as the pressure shaft. At the same time, the crew at the top of the hill began to excavate down. The total tunneling for the pressure shaft was over 600 meters in length. The 5-meter diameter pressure shaft was lowered into place on rails in 10-meter sections, each weighing 50 tons. Delicate welding of the sections was checked ultrasonically to ensure that the shaft would withstand the force of 5,000 tons of water a minute driving the turbines 300 meters below. Over 350 men and women worked on the site excavating, building and ferrying the heavy equipment up along the highest paved road in Ireland. When the construction element of the project was completed, a sealing layer of asphalt was applied covering the 40-acre surface of the lake bottom. Access roads were built around the circumference of the lake, a distance of over 1.5 kilometers. A road leading to the lake's bed was built for maintenance purposes. The mechanism which controls the flow of water in and out of the upper lake is housed in a tower which becomes an island when there is water in the lake so a tubular steel bridge mounted on rubber cushions was installed for access. The tower contains a servo motor which lifts and lowers a cylindrical gate. In an emergency situation, this will operate automatically even at maximum flow. Special access tunnels were constructed below the lake to monitor any seepage from the 2.3 million cubic meters of water above. These have been fitted with automatic sensors to detect any unusual activity. In addition, movement detectors were built into the embankment to give early warning of any settlement. To date, the technical performance of the upper lake has been excellent. Once the construction was complete, the heavy plant was installed in the cavern. This is situated 15 meters below the low water level of the lower lake. This was necessary to provide priming pump pressure for the machines when in pump mode. However, this also necessitates special precautions to avoid any risk of flooding the cavern. 
The ventilation tunnel, at a high level, provides an emergency escape route. In addition, the station has its own emergency power generators. Massive spherical valves are located at the inlet to each turbine to control water flow. These were designed to open and close in about a minute, but have since been modified by ESP engineers to operate in less than 15 seconds. They can, if necessary, intercept the full turbine flow, absorbing the force of over 290 tons. Each one of the four generating sets has a dual function, as a generator and in reverse mode as a pump to refill the upper lake. On the top of each vertical generating set is a pony motor, which is designed to bring the set up to speed before it is engaged in pumping mode. During normal peak load operation, ESB usually has at least one set spinning at full speed, ready to come on stream. This is known as spinning reserve. Should this generator be required, the computer at the National Control Center will automatically bring it on stream and trigger the startup sequence for the next available set to take up standby operation. In severe cases, all four sets will be run up to speed, ready to generate within 15 seconds. When generating, the sets produce electricity at 10,000 volts. The generating sets feed six 70-ton single-phase transformers, which are grouped into two three-phase units. These step up the voltage to 220,000 volts. The power is then fed into the national transmission network. If a thermal generating unit ceases generating unexpectedly, the other generators on the system automatically increase their output to compensate. When this happens, AirGrid will utilize fast-acting generating units such as Turlock Hill to replace the lost generation, leaving the overall system unaffected by the disturbance. The control room at Turlock Hill, known as the Hydro Control Center, or HCC, monitors and controls the station's activity, as well as performing the same function remotely on ESB's 10 hydro stations on the Shannon, Liffey, Lee, Urn, and Claddy. The station staff work closely with AirGrid, who determine all operational requirements. From outside, it's very difficult to observe any part of Turlock Hill Power Station until you arrive at the entrance. Even then, the only constructions that are at first obvious are the administration building and the exterior switching field associated with most power stations. The exterior finish of the administration building has been specially designed to blend in to the surrounding hillside. When construction was completed in 1974, ESB paid special attention to resealing the landscape to return the countryside to the natural scenic appearance that we see today. In use, the station has been so successful that it has world-class availability performance. In addition to this class-leading performance, the system support capabilities of Turlock Hill make it a key part of the modern, sustainable transmission system enabling the addition of renewable energy and dealing with the requirements of ever-changing system demands. The station has successfully harnessed a natural element without interference with the natural environment. It's also reassuring to note that our security of supply is secured by the simple process of pushing water up a hill. Today, Ireland has one of the most modern electricity systems in the world, and ESB, Ireland's key power provider, continues to transform everyday life. The smart grid quietly and efficiently distributes power wherever and whenever it's needed enabling cleaner forms of electricity to come on stream and changing the way people use electricity. ESB is looking to the future, investing in high efficiency power stations, driving innovation in clean energy and preparing for a fully connected European energy network. We are tackling modern challenges like climate change and rising costs and sharing our expertise with countries across the globe to help others develop the best energy solutions. At ESB, we are dedicated to protecting Ireland's future energy supplies and ensuring secure, sustainable and affordable power for industry and domestic use. We are committed to supporting the people in our communities and to nurturing the skills we need in the future. ESB is working hard to make sure you get the energy you need when you need it. The quiet revolution continues.